Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's June 6th, Pride Month, 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. (laughs) And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Legs, episode number 603. And uh, I don't know why I'm doing that. I just randomly... I have no... Okay, Snagglepuss. Like, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Exit. Stage right, even. (laughs) Like, where the fuck did that come from? I was trying to be (laughs) fabulous. Imaginary hair flip. Mm. I don't know. (laughs) I said earlier, my energy level is like way down here. Like, you see my hand? No, that's why. And then we get, we get. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Anyways, (laughs) it's, it's, it's that time of the month kind of, uh, for last month. Okay, so it, it is just same old, same old. Uh, I lock myself into my apartment, have everything delivered, um, and and then uh, while playing some Final Fantasy fourteen, I hear this noise coming from the direction of my door, uh, which also happens to be the direction of my work setup. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like this popping, uh, scratching sound. I'm like, is somebody doing something to my door? So I start walking towards the door, assuming it's something outside side my door. And as I'm walking, I realize the sounds not coming from the door. It's coming from my monitor. <laughs> One of my monitors. And I look over at my monitor. Uh, there's a little orange coming from the inside. You know how it has a little bit like vents? And I'm like, oh shit! So I, I quickly go up and, and pull one of the plugs off. Um, uh, and, and, and it, and then it stops. I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> and then smoking, I'm like, oh boy, I don't want the alarm to go off. So I go open the door and, and let everything cool off. A little bit later, I, re- I, I go up to kind of like check on it and be like, okay, now that everything's cooled off, I'm going to just like see what happens when I plug this back in. And I take the cord that I pulled out and I notice that it's not the power cable. The video cable that I pulled out. So this whole time it was uh, powered. So it was shorted in enough that it kind of like killed everything, whatever it was. But it wasn't something that it I needed to worry about the power. So I plugged that in just to kind of like, okay, will it turn on? Will 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 does it still work? What does it do? Testing, to see if there was something. No, it doesn't work. Oh, so, okay. So now instead of having uh, this nice, beautiful, I think it's 4K, a uh, 24 inch monitor or 27 inch monitor, um, along with the, the, the cheap ass 24 inch that I took from the office when I went to work from home, um, uh, I now just have the 24 inch monitor. <laughs> and I put in a ticket to be like, hey, my monitor shorted out. And the 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 initial uh, uh, person said, "Okay, well, uh, I'll I'll let inventory know, and I'll well, I, I'll let inventory know." That's all they said, and I'm like, 
Okay, so I assume you're gonna have them send me a new one with a return label so I can return this one? <laughs> and then he said yes. And I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. That's all I need. So nice, <laughs> nice, quick, easy little little text port thing, right? Because the monitor just definitely doesn't work. So he puts in the ticket uh, to do that. And I, of course, get copied on it. Mm -hmm. And it, they go from like, they bounce to a couple of people. And then the, the last person says, oh, you're a vendor. Uh, we don't deal with vendors. Oh. You're, you're going to have to uh, go through your own people. And I'm like, fuck. I, it, I think we're still getting it from, uh, or, or, uh, we would probably still get the replacement from Google. It's just, it just has to go a different route than the way route I went to through or something. So CC'd my supervisor and manager on it and hopefully eventually here. What I was expecting to happen in the first place will happen in the second place. <laughs> but that's my entire excitement. Well, that is quite exciting considering you know if you hadn't seen it or heard it you might have there might have been a much bigger excitement you know like a fire um so, yeah the only thing yeah. is is when i when i did something to in an attempt to like prevent that stuff from happening the thing i did wouldn't have prevented any further sh spreading or anything <laughs> mm. So I, in, in general, and I, and I did like stick around and kind of watch it, you know, and mm -hmm. such, but if I had done the right thing, it would probably been like, well, in the end I was, it was like, well, I'm a lucky little shit. Yeah. In any case, it is currently completely unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still haven't packed it back into its box box mm -hmm. so that when I do get the replacement, I can slap the label on it, tape it up with, with a whole bunch of packing tape and uh, uh, let FedEx know to come pick it up um, and, and ship it off and have a new monitor. And Now I have to deal with work with the, just my MacBook monitor and my uh, uh, 24 inch, which isn't like utterly terrible, but look, when you have to look at 40 <laughs> different video feeds all at the same time, don't give me that face. It's, it's more <laughs> difficult than you might think. I'm sure it is. So it's, it's just, it, I probably could have done without the 24 inch monitor is the 27 inch, but in higher resolution that, uh, mm. uh, really, uh, made things work. I, I was pr pretty much frequently just using that. Um, and the other, other one was just a supplement, but yeah. I personally appreciate multiple, um, uh, monitor, um, working. Mm. Because uh, I I've got one of those things where I have to actually see a lot of stuff all on the same screens mm -hmm. on a bunch of screens. So working on yeah. two monitors like right now, I mm. on my home computer I, I work just two monitors. I mean it's plus that I have a second monitor, but uh, but uh, having the essentially three monitors, my laptop and these two monitors. Um, uh, for my job, when I'm dealing with video, I'm dealing with chat, I'm doing with like 40, 50 uh, video feeds all at one time. Um, mm. I, I need the multiple monitors in order to properly see things. So yeah. it's very visual. I also made sure to set my, uh, uh, night shift on my, uh, on my laptop to be, uh, essentially 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. because when you're looking at a screen where all the background is white and there's no dark mode and you have eyes that aren't are as bad as mine 
Anyways, mm -hmm. that's my bit. I tend room. to do that with all my monitors, like as soon as I can, laptop, computer, because usually I'm like, oh man, like what is with this brightness or something? And then I'm <laughs> like, oh yeah, let me just flip Re that around. That. And, yeah. yeah. I also have night light on my Windows machine, so. Yeah. I love how they're like, so you want this to come on at 6 p.m.? Nope. I would like it to be on at 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. Like I want it on during the day. I want my eyes to have a rest. Thank you. Actually, very much. actually it's <laughs> I set mine to be like at uh from seven oh one AM to seven AM. Mm. So no matter when I have it open, it should be on. It, I mean for me it depends. Like my my personal computer, yeah, it's a lot more expensive in time, but if it's the the work laptop situation or the work desktop. I'm like, um, I only need this for the hours that I'm going to work. That's it. <laughs> Anyways, so that's me. Not really that. Okay. Um, despite a whole bunch of hullabaloo that uh, we had with the pre-show, which if you want to hear the pre-show, um, become a patron. Patreon.com slash comes out loud. Um, Damon, what's been going on with you? Huh. Well, let's see. Um, I am done with chorus for the season. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you retiring from chorus? No, or... no. So, um, basically the month of May was, um, relatively short for the chorus. We did rehearsals. We've got our songs done. Um, they came up with this new idea, which I'm so glad I did while we're doing the concerts virtually. Um, instead of everyone recording their own videos individually and our videographers and, and, you know, those, the folks that are working on that, the digital process of it, having to reformat and hope for the best that someone has a de has given them a decent video. They said, here, we're going to set this room up. Everyone come in behind the, and you'll be, you know, you'll, you know, dress like you're supposed to dress behind and you'll be in front of a green screen and we'll record you doing the the, the do, record the videos essentially so the songs that we're doing they're recording the videos and i must admit i wish we had thought of this sooner um while covid was a main issue that we weren't trying to get together so much i think this would have been a nice idea if we could have potentially done it for other concert, because it helps a lot. I, I I believe it will make the product mm -hmm. a lot better and cleaner. Um, there won't be as hopefully there won't be as much for the videographer videographers and stuff to do to make it look good because everyone's essentially going to be the same. Um, yeah. So cool with that. Um, we did our last rehearsal. I want to say mid May. And then we had um, board elections on the 26th. And that is it. The concert drops in the end of this month. Um, so hopefully with everything that they're doing, it'll be a little bit easier to get done. Now, what would, I don't know if we've, we've not talked about jumping, like bumping it up if we can get everything done. I think we're really genuinely going to have it happen on the 26th of June. So yay. Um, with that, uh, um, Jim and I, for Memorial Day weekend, um, took a trip out of town. Um, we haven't really traveled much because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, I've done a little bit here and there, but, um, for the most part, we've pretty much been home. And what we really wanted to do was kind of get away from, the city and just relax somewhere you know cozy you know out of not not like well originally i thought about doing a cabin but memorial day and cabins way too expensive mm -hmm. but um we decided to just like we went to bloomington indiana which is his um uh, college hometown mm -hmm. so um we went there Memorial Day weekend. We stayed at a bed and breakfast, which, because again, because of COVID, it wasn't 
as bed and breakfast as you think because usually you think oh you come together and you have breakfast and you sit in a, in a table and chit chat with all the other people that are staying there etc cetera, etc cetera. because of covid we were pretty much had a room to ourselves and um they um you filled out forms to get the breakfast every morning so it was almost almost breakfast in bed but not really um but it was still nice. The, the food was really good. I would love to go back to this place and experience it in full, like pre-COVID, like fun. Um, um, but on off of the trip, so we, you know, we toured the campus. He was surprised at everything that has changed in the years that since he's been there. We read up with a friend of his that still lives in town or recently moved back into town. Um, had dinners. Um, and then on Sunday, we went to Nashville, Indiana, which is a folk arts um, sort of fun little place to go to. Um, we walked around. We got, if you follow me on Facebook, we got some wine. Um, we got some really neat spices. Um, uh, we also, uh, I did mention this, but um, there was a vendor um, selling all of their leather jackets, all of their leather coats and stuff for like a hundred dollars. So we were able to, despite us being, you know, bigger bear type size, they, we found, or they found for us matching like the classic biker leather with the, the zipper up the side mm-hmm. jackets. So, and we found two that fit both. Well, well we found ones that fit both of us. So that was kind of neat. <clears throat> and then we came home Monday and, you know, we relaxed and chilled and, um, and then finally kind of into the new normal. Um, Jim's schedule will officially be changing um, since he's been working from home. He's done with his training with his new job, so he will now be working 12 to 830. So that, of course, means a lot of things are going to have to change for us. Um, Dinners are going to have to be different. Lunches are going to have to be different, um, uh, especially during the week. Or we're going to have to, you know, figure what needs to be done when um, and other things. And on top of that, uh, we found out this weekend. <laughs> um, so Jim has a um, new fun condition. Um, he we found. Um, he was having difficulties breathing, and we found out that he has blood clots in his lungs. So no. um, he's on a regimen for six months to hopefully, you know, you know, take care of that. Um, but um, this, if you saw my what, it, what a fucking weekend, like what a fucking day. Saturday was kind of like mm-hmm. a very emotional like day. He was he went into the hospital late Friday night. After going to the emergency room, he drove himself. And then Saturday was, um, you know, we were, I was going to go there. And then he was told that he was going to be discharged. So I, we didn't go to the hospital because they said he was going to be discharged. And then <laughs> they, they say, oh, like, um, by the way, like, no, we're not, we're, we're not quite ready to discharge you yet because there's something with insurance and this oxygen supply stuff that they need to figure out because that needs to come home with them. And over and over and over and back and forth, he eventually came home um, um, Friday, Saturday evening. And uh, <laughs> um, I kind of, um, kind of, um, um, rage quit at a um, D and D game. Um, yeah, uh, that was that was that was Saturday. Um, oh my! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to get into too much detail because I've been talking this whole time. Um, but me and one of the players um, apparently have been. I've I've been having issues with him for a while, but I've kept them to myself. And he apparently has had issues with me and it kept him to himself. And they came to a forefront Saturday night. Um, and to the point where I packed up my stuff and walked out. Yeah. 
Is this a long-standing D and D group you've been with? I've been with them only, I think, only a couple of months. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. I've had again. I've I've we've we've I've had issues with their gameplay and how they're treating like the DM and how they're um, handling a lot of stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. And it's been boiling, I will say, in the back of my head for a while. Um, Mm. They had changed characters recently. Um, Now, they said they changed it because of me, which, okay, you didn't say that then. You just were another character, so whatever. Um, But, uh, uh, you know, change your character. If you're still a shitty player, you're still a shitty player playing just a new character. So... um, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Mic drop. I see. Yeah. Lens on the stand um, that, can't drop in. Um. So. Damn. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Still a little pissed. <laughs> but yeah. So. And and you know they've been playing this new character just like kind of similar to the way they're playing the old character doing random shit that doesn't make any sense to their character or anything else but whatever um but i had been letting a lot of things go and yesterday was kind of it um and our let me rephrase he's the one that started it and okay. but it allowed for all of the issues to kind of come flooding out. So, and I'm done. So I left. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, oh, there ooh, you go. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> the uh, AC, we can yeah. hear it. Only you can. Oh, nice. <laughs> because the streaming software is better at noise suppression. Nice. Well, okay. Very. I guess. Um, Gary? Yeah, so uh, I said returning to normal, question mark, um, because I have been fully vaccinated for quite a while, been kind of laying low, summer's here. Those three months of the year for the rest of the US the summer season. So hang on a second. Stand by while we as we are experiencing technical difficulties. Okay. So, yeah, with it being summer and these months, uh, I was like, you know what? I want to get away. Mm. So I went uh, to the fair city of um, Porkopolis, a.k.a. Cincinnati, for uh-huh. Royal Day weekend, and a certain Damon ran away with his man. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go away for a couple of days. Um, I actually stopped in Columbus on the way, saw some uh, couple of people there, and then continued on my way to Cincinnati and into the like extended weekend and then came home. And then I had a guest here for the week, uh, which was oh. nice. And uh, then they left and went home. Um, and you know, it's, it's kind of, it's odd because Friday night was like a Saturday night. So it's, I feel like I got an extra day out of the weekend, weirdly. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was like, okay. And then, um, yeah, like, uh, being around people and going into places, uh, like, Realizing on your way home 
from dinner with friends at their other place that you don't have masks when you go to walk inside a business, but they have signage that says if you're masked or if you're vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you don't need a mask. Mm. So I was like, sweet. We yeah. don't have to wear masks. Yeah. So we're going to do a late night munchie run and we're going to order a bunch of food. <laughs> and then, like sit inside, you know, kind of a convenience store or whatever and eat and drink and then go home. And soon after probably yeah. go to bed. But... It was, it was very interesting going mm. to, um, to Nashville and some of the stores did, you know, say, please wear masks, whatever are, but most of them had started the whole process of, well, if you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask Yeah. or no mask at all. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, yesterday, so the local pride organization um, had their meeting to discuss what they're doing for pride events this year. Um, the pride fest is actually going to be a virtual event because it's coming up in just a couple of weeks. And uh, technically according to the calendar, we will have not been released from wearing masks by the state. Mm -hmm. um, the indoor and outdoor like population density thing, those mitigations have already been released. Um, so it's basically everybody can go anywhere. You know, mapping is really the only thing in place until the end of the month, basically. So, uh, but Pride would be right before that. And I was having this discussion today with someone because um, uh, we got together to discuss the picnic coming up in August. And I was talking about how uh, nobody wants to be the first big event in our city. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think they're a little worried about like an outbreak. So because you can't. I mean, that's not true. I was about to say you can't control it. But I was like, technically, you could take on a lot of measures. Mm. Screen everybody, temp check everyone you know, document who all they are or whatever, but that would be incredibly daunting, especially for an outdoor oh. arena uh, area yep. kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, it's been quite of a quiet time, and uh, things are, like I said, returning to normal, question mark. So, people are camping, they're doing things. Um, events are, you know, moving forward as they can, make plans and announcements, and so now people are like trying to figure out what they're doing for the rest of 2021, what they're going to do next year for 2022. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful for where things are going to be at. Um, but I've also been finding a lot of conversation revolving around how folks are thinking about how, uh, this is what I said to my uh, friend that I met for uh, just a late kind of afternoon drinking, um, snack thing i said i see lots of people finding out that they're introverts or coming to terms with the fact that they're an introvert and like now that there's options to go back to working in the office environment they're not necessarily happy about that um as it was pointed out to me if say you have 200 people in a building and three people are assholes three assholes make a lot of impact on the other 200 people mm -hmm. <laughs> So if you could stay home and not interact with them, you could possibly mitigate your anxiety and frustration and, and a lot of rest of that stuff, which I thought was an <laughs> interesting counterpoint. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's it fair. Makes sense. It, it, uh, it's easier to get mad at people. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can do it from your own home. You're, you're not actually in front of them. So they, they can't uh, see your ire where you're like, you goddamn stupid idiot. Or something like that. Well, I mean, and I'm kind of paraphrasing what our conversation was. But yeah, basically, it's like, why would you want to be around people if you don't have to be around people? Um, True. And now that, you know, because of the pandemic, a lot of people have learned, oh, work can be done remotely. But, you know, some employers are kind of struggling with the whole, like, you know, control aspect of, you know, oversight and supervision. And, you know, how do I know that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? And yada, yada. To which my feeling is, but that's on you. Like, that's your job as a supervisor. You should be uh -huh. monitoring and paying attention. And, like, you should uh -huh. be ever ready to know what their productivity is and how to track that. And if you don't know that, don't put the pressure on the employee to prove it to you. Like, you know. With like hourly check-ins or I don't know. I mean, just some random crap. Yeah. I mean, it's something to think about. Yeah. 
So, and with my job, you know, things are uh, progressing and moving along. I got, uh, we're at the, we're wrapping up on the spend down for our grant and I got some big advertising stuff uh, approved, thank goodness, from the state. So mm -hmm. um, we are uh, looking at that coming up here, um, finishing, which I'm very happy about. So that's going to launch in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. Um, and uh, I'm a little concerned because summer's going to come and summer's going to go, I think, rather quickly this year. Because people have the opportunity to get out and do things and they're going to do it. So I think there's going to be more people traveling, you know, holiday time. Like even if it's just like little weekend getaways, that kind of stuff. Because look at us. It's already the first weekend of June. And in four weeks, it's going to be July 4th. <laughs> mm hmm Which is one of our busiest days of the year. Oh, God. <laughs> July 4th. So, the days, the days. Yeah. You, you want the July 4th off tough nuggies. <laughs> yeah. You have to call that off like five months in advance. Yeah, actually, you probably don't let it let us do this because they need planning to figure out what's actually going to be happening, so that they make sure that even if somebody's off, we they got somebody. So, yeah. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's been um, it's been a bit of an adventure the past month, and <laughs> I'm looking forward to see how things you know continue and progress, and um, you know, well, we shall see what develops. And uh, as Jeffrey started the show with his uh, snaggle push, um, big gay owl polar bear like, <laughs> imitation uh, thing, it's pride. So everything is a goddamn rainbow right now. So everything's coming up rainbows. We will discuss that in a couple of weeks on another show because oh, we nice. typically talk about pride each year and i'm sure we have some opinions about what the internet seems to think about pride this year because whoo howdy people have thoughts <laughs> are we, we not, not talking pride? about t-h-o-t <laughs> no <laughs> what was that david <laughs> I said, are we surprised and i agree with you we're not talking about t-h-o-t jeff we are talking about marketing yeah. Capitalism, <laughs> the almighty dollar. <laughs> Although I do have to admit, one of the memes that that I think has been around for a little while, but came back around and cracked me up, was Wesley Snipes. So mm. there's a picture of Wesley Snipes and Blade, and it says May 31st. And then there's a picture of Wesley Snipes as Noxima Jackson from Two Wong Fu, July, <laughs> June 1st. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very gay. It's like, uh, I I love Patrick Swayze and and uh, Wesley Snipes for for doing Tu Wong Fu. John Leguizamo. Uh, John Leguizamo. Yeah. What's what's her name? Um, Leg doesn't count. Leguizamo. There we go. Um, he he's another type of character that it kind of works just fine, but. The other mm. two, not somebody you would normally think of as being in what <laughs> of doing one of these things. And they did it, and they did it fabulously. I still think it's one of the all-time classic. Like, it's right up there LGBT with Priscilla, honestly. Q, yeah, yeah. Uh, films. Like Priscilla yeah. is like classic. This is yeah. like well, the and, modern and, classic. And, and right, and a lot of them have like their niche of you mm -hmm. know what it is that they're portraying and, and yes it is drag it is camp it is meant to be stupid like it's not meant to be realistic mm -hmm. um you know because when drag queens drive cross country why in the world would you do it in full face and geese like come on sisters like <laughs> <laughs> exactly mama right. once the lights go off and the and and the show is done i'm i'm done i'm i'm untucked I'm, my makeup is off like my nails are off <laughs> And I if mean, you're going to drive cross country in a convertible, why on earth would you be corseted? My goodness. Like, no, thank you. Like, I'm sure even Violet Chachki's got a limit on that. I mean, you know, yeah. 
that's a queen who normally like uh course it so yeah it's so i'll be curious to see uh how things continue along because there's already been some discussions including uh just this weekend apparently in pittsburgh was one of several pride events that are happening this month because why oh because that community is fractured at the moment um oh yes you can read all about it online children but uh the big uh lgbtq entity um is like I don't even know it's still in existence. The community kind of had like a hissy fit about a bunch of things. And uh, so now I think there's three different prides happening this month. Um, and one of them was yesterday, I think, called Revolution Pride. So there you go. Mm. People taking power and doing what they want to do. That's some tea that needs to be spilled. Anyways, I think it's time to, to, to move on, right? Are you yeah. ready? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gary, what's been going on over in Facebook, the Facebooks? Uh, well, uh, I'm not going to get into the politics because that came up recently. You can read about mm. that online, I'm sure, in the news. Uh, as to what uh-huh. happened, a uh, certain former uh, individual and their their banning situation, but. Uh, for us with Cubs Out Loud, we had one like in the past month, and we would like to thank Roberto Vargas for liking us on Facebook. Muchas gracias. I don't know if you're a Spanish speaker. Or that may be assumption, but hey. I'm also yeah. from Texas. I just went to, to the supermercado this afternoon, and uh, I, I believe I only spoke spanish it was just the uh, buenas tardes and uh, uh gracias and me too after they, they said, said have a good day <laughs> <You know. laughs> so um we got some a youtube subscriber thank you richard yates for subscribing to us on youtube and then we got a couple of comments um on col 600 which was our newest achievement unlocked now what owen replied have some thoughts about what Gary was saying about representation in organizations. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe we had a conversation about that in the Telegram chat. Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. I think we did, Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then on COL 601, which was um, Landscapes of Relationships, the Friend with Benefits episode, um, Bertie Burtface said, another good guys, 4313, Gary's reaction to the, quote, control wordage being used. I had a similar reaction. I can't remember what that was. But if anything, it was he about 43 time, minutes yeah. and 13 <laughs> seconds. If you go to 601, it's probably a set up as a link on there. You can just define this comment and, and click it. and It'll take you right to the moment. I haven't looked, but I'm assuming... Uh, over on Twitter, uh, we have uh, Blithwolf uh, following us. So, Ooh. Thank you for long. I know that. <laughs> I know who that is. I was gonna say, David, do you know that name? I know that name. Yes, I do. Because I was like, that person lives in Ohio, I believe. Uh huh. Pretty sure. And yeah. Gary, uh, over the month of uh, May, we uh, had four shows. And then a flashback. What, what, what exactly happened? There's right. One. So 599 was our last What's Going On. That was for the month of April. And then we did episode 600. Achievement unlocked. Now what? So we discussed our milestone uh, being the longest. Like, actually, as of that episode, numerically tying with the longest running uh, Bear Community podcast. And now with the most recent ones, we have obviously past that threshold a week later 601 we did landscape of relationship series mr edward angelini cook came back and joined us and we talked about friends with benefits Mm -hmm. um and then the following week we did episode 602 and we did let's talk about sex series just for fans slash only fans 
And then last week, while Damon and I were out away for the weekend, gallivanting around the northeastern part of the country, uh, we <laughs> did uh, Comes Out Loud flashback to episode 162. So 438-ish, 440 episodes ago, uh, it was to bear or not to bear. And the discussion was about like the basically kind of the experiences of the host at that time and about, you know, condoms and safe play and, and those type of things. And notably, right. I think I said that was like, what, nine years ago um, as an episode. So it's a very different time. Uh, and that's what's interesting about some of these flashbacks. They're a little bit of a, like a time capsule into a previous uh, state of affairs in the country and science and you name it. So, And I thank Gary for doing me much less work to do because he essentially did the intro. Well, I, I added a little snippet. If you didn't listen <laughs> to the episode, I basically put a, a – I don't know if I really want to call it a disclaimer, but, like, I added something to the beginning to basically say, like, you know, in reference of time and what was mm. known, like, there were – opinions and thoughts and ideas like expressed and shared at the time that in today's context of 2021 may not necessarily seem like uh i don't want to say relevant but like they definitely kind of speak to the like time. something is is different and the thing that's different is time uh mm -hmm. having passed and and the experiences that folks have had and like you know both damon and jeff the two of you were in that episode so uh yeah, you know, along with some other hosts, and it's it's a different thing. I've I've kind of want to listen to it. I haven't because I haven't had time. No. Uh, right. uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but I I'm I'm curious because I'm I'm pretty pretty sure some of my opinions have changed i'm 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 pretty sure i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure especially considering that i am now on prep um and um yeah pretty sure it, it really is kind of a reflection of overall change of like knowledge and and just just of the environment such as I, I don't even know if prep was even being talked about very much, if at all, back in that time. Um, so, so that that's because of the atmosphere of the moment that it, it kind of gives you like, oh, yeah, I remember a time like that when when that sort of thinking was was pretty common or and then things have changed. Like I've said so many different things on this show that later uh i think one example uh, of kind of like the evolution of our thought process and how our knowledge about topics have advanced is i i swear i think we even did a flashback or two uh where i've said some some things about like Basically, my thought process, especially in regards to the trans community, has changed mm -hmm. immensely uh, mm -hmm. since the since the earlier days of the the show. And when by the time that uh, TB came on for his episode, uh, my thoughts were completely different. Mm. Well, maybe not That's completely, fair. but essentially more evolved, and 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 there was something different to it because no matter what as time goes we continue to grow and change uh sometimes for the better sometimes for the worse but uh, i think we have definitely especially bringing these type of topics up over and over again uh we've learned the stuff and we've gotten become better people right and as far as the historical reference so like prep was um approved by the FDA in 2012, which was the same year that that episode came out. And actually, let me do some quick research. I think um, when that episode had come out, uh, it wasn't, yeah, that episode was June 3rd of 2012. And I don't quite recall exactly what time of year. I think it might have been um, around the summer when that came out. But then the World Health Organization also 
made a recommendation for PrEP. And it wasn't really until November of 2015 when uh, the World Health Organization expanded who should be using PrEP that things really started to, to um, improve, I guess, or advance in that case. So I think when that conversation had taken place, it was purely abstinence, safe sex practices as far as like contraception, like condoms. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of it. Like, I mean, if you were a person who was positive in 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 uh, in medical care, like, you know, in regimen and, and being consistent with that, U equals U wasn't even on the forefront yet. So, yeah, um, yeah, there I think I think at that time prior to prep, there was a lot more conversation about people's statuses. I know that sounds a little backwards, but I think now more than ever, there's less conversation about an individual status. When was the last time they got tested? And the thing that I'm seeing in the work that I do now is like, we really need to expand the education and the understanding. Like we need to talk about like all the STI stuff. Like we need to talk about syphilis and gonorrhea and mm -hmm. chlamydia and trick and stuff because they're all on the upswing and syphilis unfortunately was on the downswing until about probably, I want to say maybe 2014. I mean, I was wrong, like 2016. And then it's just been slowly climbing since then. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, the work that I'm doing, one of the things we're going to be including into the advertising when I can get the, um, statistics finally nailed down is, you know, the more frequent you have of an STI occurrence, ratio statistically you are more likely to contract hiv because behaviorally if you keep exposing yourself to individuals and having infection from not the same individual but from it could be different individuals mm -hmm. then like that says that behaviorally you're not making your own personal health a priority or asking the questions or you're not aware of like the signs the symptoms that someone has an infection of some kind and that's to be fair not all of them are symptomatic you know you could be infectious but not have symptoms that's one thing but like to even have the conversation to know about that so yeah. that's that's the next thing like i feel like some people are aware and other people are not and it poses you know quite the challenge because now with the technology anonymous hookups are completely doable and you know when it comes to tracing and talking to people and trying to get in touch with the partners they're like i don't have names i don't know who these people are you know like no offense, they're just a random yeah. hole, which mm -hmm. nothing against my coworkers, but I think they're struggling with that, like trying to comprehend oh. and understand. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, people could be highly sexual active and not give a shit about having a connection with another person. Like, yes, they're going to connect. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, six it's to 12 minutes in, they're done and then they're gone. They're, yeah. they're, they're, like, they're probably... it. it Okay, sorry. This is going to be a really bad analogy, but it's, <laughs> it it it's kind of like the the server at a restaurant. They don't even know your name. They see so many tables a day, like so many other people. Mm. We don't even know who you are. Like, let me get your order. Let me get you your food. Let me get you your drinks, and then I'm I'm you you hopefully will give me a tip, and then I move on to the next fucking table. I don't need to know all your business, right? <laughs> because because the t sex I'm talking about is very transactional. Like what you're mm -hmm. describing is exactly that. Like we're going to have a moment and I don't mean financially. I mean, it could be sex work, but I, I'm not focusing on that. I'm just saying, you know, there's a transaction. There's, you know, there's some agreement. There's a moment. There's an experience. There mm -hmm. might be an exchange of bodily fluids and then they move on with their life. Like, and so, you know, why do, why do I need to know who this person is? I even see it on Twitter a little bit. Like I saw someone post the other day 24 hours 48 hours something they were like they were like i had an amazing time with this daddy like they made me feel things i've never felt before and i'm hoping that it happens again and in between the lines i'm reading i'm like do you know the daddy's name like do you have their information to follow up with them because this sounds like you want it you want it to repeat but did you you like, may not make be that able to a thing right because you don't know their name. Because if because it if was they're Daddy really Bear seventy three, I know exactly who he is. <laughs> yeah, he's tall. He's beefy. He's broad shouldered. He's kind of thick. He has a great beard. Little, gray, little gray. He's got tattoos. Yeah. He's got a yeah. big ass dick like that. You know, like 
Yeah, there's probably there's there's yeah, I I could I could maybe pick him out of a lineup. <laughs> no, all, all you need to do is just show me the dicks. I'll be able to <laughs> identify them that way. I don't, I don't need to say the rest of them. You. Anyways. That's him. Number six. With the nine. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, moving, on. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. I'm going to move on right now. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Uh, uh, I, I, I really haven't been looking at Twitter at all. So, Damon, what did that. you find? Um, so I actually found a couple. Um, the first one I titled Sailor Pinup, and it is from um, Dusty Cunningham. Um, and it is a picture of at Beefy Bear Cub, who is gorgeous, by the way. And it's just a really fun, I call like it's a kind of a pin y picture. I mean, yes, he's wearing a jock, but, you know, no genitals are exposed. It's kind of a fun little tongue-in-cheek kind of moment i just i really fucking like it and the blue in the uniform is like pulling out the blue in his eyes it's just kind of fun i think it's a cute picture so yeah um my, my, my. Nope. i need to get back to you hold on because i have to do my <laughs> dusty sorry i'm doing um There we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. And I think it's a fun picture. It, it just really, like, I don't know. Um, the, the background, everything else, it just all kind of works. Kind of cute. And he's he's hot. So, there's that. Um, and then the... Um, surprise, surprise. Speaking of daddy bears that we were talking about earlier. Mm. Uh, Mr. Um, if you remember him from Twitter. Ooh. Or not Twitter. From Tumblr. Um, Cigar Perv Dad is is on um, Twitter now, and um, he wanted to let you know that the bar at Uproar is open fully, and he would like to see the boys there. Um, and he's in his, um, I'm assuming probably very stained jock um, shirt up top, um, you know. Yeah, it yeah. Yeah, so he's uh he's got a cigar in his mouth. He's in a bathroom standing next to a urinal. He's rolled the tank top up so it's up over top of his uh chest and he's adjusting his hat while pulling a nip and then obviously um things have escaped from the jock down below. Mm-hmm. Uh cuz yeah. So Hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, hi. You, if you, um, I, like I said, I remember him from Tumblr. Um, he was on there. He was one of my, like, I would watch, see that I love seeing his stuff when he would put it out there because he hit a lot of buttons for me. And now he's on Twitter and I am super happy. And again, he is not shy. Mm hmm. Definitely not shy. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, would nice. you be shy if you look like that? <laughs> yeah, Gary. Uh, so I have two as well. So we're making it for Jeff. Um, uh, my first one is called, I titled it, Just Gonna Leave This Here. Because that's technically, like paraphrasing what West Cub wrote. Now, when you click the link and you go through to Tumblr, or sorry, Twitter... <laughs> You will probably get a cropped version of the oh, image. Oh, I remember this now. Right, which is amazing. So this is from way back in May 11th, and uh, there's a it's a black and white like grayscale cartoon kind of drawing deal, uh, and it says one gentleman says to um, what appears to be a female presenting individual, it says. Uh, they say, sure, you don't want to join us for dinner. And then um, the female presenting character says, thanks, but I have a meatball sub waiting for me at home. And they have their door, they have their hand on the doorknob. And then you go to the next panel, which is below. And they show <laughs> this big, huge guy, like, 
you know, um, wearing a zipped mask hoodie mm-hmm. naked mm-hmm. on the edge of a bed. <laughs> I don't know, is, he, is he naked or does he have a jock on or something? Hard to say. Uh, I don't know. Like, it's difficult to say because they don't really yeah, I can't know, zoom in. kind of focus on that. But my, my, my favorite thing about this is the wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> because... You know, Around. the character says, I have a meatball sub waiting for me at home. And then, of course, the panel that you get is not what you probably would have thought of, given the context <sighs> of the dinner comment. And I was like, yes! Like, I loved this just, like, for the, the cake, like, pun positivity, like, mm-hmm. hysterical <laughs> to me. I don't know. It tickled me to know it. I was like. I love it. I'm like, yep. Totally don't understand the context. <laughs> 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 Thanks, but I have a meatball set away from me home. There's like a little round um, sub on your bed waiting for you at home. Yeah. Look at and that. then my second one, I it doesn't have a title, so I titled it Clean Horny Love. And oh. uh, so the Twitter account is Ismail Ferrer or at Ismailio Ferrari. Ferrari. Um mm-hmm. But they're an artist, and I've, like, seen some of their stuff recently, and I loved (laughs) this picture. So there are these two, like, kind of, um, you know, bigger guys that uh, are apparently, like, in the midst of shower, like, getting done with a shower, going into a shower. Like, my context is I think that they're partners and that they are, like trying to use the same bathroom or something. But what I love about it is that they're facing each other and one's taller than the other. The shorter one looks like they're bad, but they have this great little squiggly line with a heart above their head. And then when you look down below, the towel that's wrapped around their waist is it's semi-transparent in the front to show that they have an erect penis, which I think is hysterical. Yeah. I just love like the whimsy of, of the, this, like mm-hmm. image and and how it was put together um yeah like it's it's quite fun so i was like i just kind of like their their take and their focus on daddy um imagery stuff like mm-hmm. this morning's um was called sunday breakfast and it's a quick pencil uh drawing <laughs> pencil line drawing uh and it shows a daddy who's um extracting dna from an appendage of another person <laughs> um morning and drink. i was just like wow like so yeah i'm like let's be supportive of an artist who's doing some some cool uh stuff yeah yeah i like it so no. yeah i was like that's fun they're based in barcelona espana um they joined twitter in november 2020 so that says to me they uh, we're probably on another platform of some kind and then decided to like putting some of their art over in this mm-hmm. area too. But they, they pretty much have a thing for daddies with beards um, mm-hmm. and like chest hair and basically sex acts and other things. So they, if you've seen things like bears of Spain and all that stuff or yeah, makes sense. <sighs> yeah, I really like their because it's very um to me it's very like sketch art. Like if you ever see how animated films get done now with the, yeah all the um I'm gonna completely lose all my like knowledge from watching these documentary things when they do the um previs, that's what it is, the pre-visualization, they basically take all of these sketches mm. and like and it's every so many seconds. So it's kind of like a moving picture thing, but that's what this art style reminds me of how like, there's not a ton of definition. It's kind of like more um, like looser defined and, and that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty animatic pretty cool. or something along those lines. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And I mean, in the midst of their stuff, they do a lot of watercolor um, pencil draw. Um, some of it's, you know, really kind of whimsical and amazing, but every once in a while, like I'm, I'm scrolling through their feed and, they have uh, an item, you know, an item or two where I was like, "Wow, like that's some really defined, detailed, really good uh, work." But I like their their watercolor um, style stuff that they do. So, mm-hmm. yay! Very nice. 
And moving on to Link's Gary. What's been going on over in Netflix land? Uh, well, there's a whole lot of things going on on Netflix, but um, I, since the last time we had um, done what's going on, I watched a couple of things I wanted to pass on for folks as a recommendation. Uh, the Last Blockbuster is a documentary about the last blockbuster store in the world um, and how uh, the journey that they go on. And there's lots mm. of celebrities who talk about this store. Um, Kevin Smith happens to be in it, um, talks about, you know, and they, and what's interesting is I love how as a documentary, it kind of talks about what VHS tape rental was like in the eighties. Mm. And like, that's kind of how these stores came along and how they grew. And so there's a lot of great, like historical kind of aspects to it, but then it's also, you get to meet the woman that is the manager, uh, of this last store and her family, pretty much all of her kids and friends of her kids have worked there. Um, so it's been been Mm. really, really, uh, kind of interesting to see that. I really like that. Um, the trial of the Chicago seven is a, uh, kind of a biopic film. Um, so if you don't know about the trial of the Chicago seven, it's based on a real life event about seven individuals, um, actually technically eight, but you have to watch the film to understand that, uh, that were, uh, taken to trial, um, and I can't remember what year it is. It's in the sixties. I want to say, so there is a democratic convention. Maybe it was the seventies. I'd have to look it up. Uh, but basically there were riots and things that happened. And so the leaders of these events, um, that took place at that time, uh, were put on trial because they were in theory, according to the government responsible for what happened. And so there's all these different aspects about like how the city was prepared and it kind of addresses police violence um, and those kind of things. So it's a, I really enjoyed that particular film. Aaron Sorkin wrote the script. So if you like Aaron Sorkin stuff and you know how he likes lots of words, this is probably up your alley. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least is a movie that like an animated film on Netflix that I saw a bunch of people talking about it. It was recommended, of course, by Netflix. And I was like, I don't know if I'm really interested in this. But I have to say, as someone who's kind of not wanting to jump on the bandwagon, The Mitchells versus The Machines is actually a really good film that is not by a like one of the major animation studios. Mm-hmm. Um And uh, in fact, as of today, it's rated number eight in movies today at Netflix. Um, Mm -hmm. Maya Rudolph's in it. Uh, It says Danny McBride, Abby Jacobson. Um, This movie is quirky. That's how they describe it on Netflix, which is kind of fun. Um, So it's about this family where there is a child. um, The older child is going to be going off to school, like uh, college, higher education, and has never necessarily felt like they fit in because they've pursued the arts. And then they have a, a younger um, a child, a, a sibling, a brother. Um, and anyways, this family, well, you'll have to watch it. But basically the plans for them going to college end up changing and it turns into a cross-country trip. And then in the midst of the cross-country trip, the world turns into a robot apocalypse. And <laughs> they need to survive the robot apocalypse and possibly stop it. Mm-hmm. As a classic American family can do. The like, robot apocalypse puts the brakes on their cross-country road trip. Now it's up to the Mitchells, the world's weirdest family, to save the human race. And a lot of people have posted how uh, some people have the hots for the dad. Um, which amuses me. <laughs> because I think, you know, the fact that he's a big bellied guy with a, you know, full mustache, kind of a beard, glasses, perhaps a little Mm. bit of a receding hairline. Um, You know, and he's kind of awkward. I think a lot of people connected in some ways and they were like, Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, it's, it's, um, it's an hour and 54 minutes. It's rated PG. I honestly really liked it. I was, I was amused by it. I was like, this is a fun flick. Like, like I would watch it again Cause it reminded me sort of of a Pixar film in that like, there's probably more I'm not picking up on that's happening within this film. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. So, uh, and, and, and I love the subtext about big corporations and technology and how they can't be trusted. Cause it's really interesting how the robot revolution comes about and they kind of smash together some of these 
international conglomerate tech companies that exist in the real world and they kind of bridge them together into this like fictional world thing and you know why well, didn't realize they were gonna mm-hmm. okay mm. yeah they don't have to didn't we learn anything from terminator anyways <laughs> <laughs> that's, fair. that's fair yeah Mm-mm-mm. guess what folks it's the end. Wow. Play with contact us, pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. All these links will be linked on the blog. Um, you can also shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 CL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also uh, join us for a conversation like we, we had uh, in regards to one of our previous shows uh, just recently at uh, our Telegram chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can pop over to our Google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col, and you can actually subscribe to it. Uh, you can also get various accoutrements, such as a Cubs That Loud shirt in various different styles, like a regular one in burgundy that Damon has, or a nice white one. I don't think this type of shirt is available currently right now. I don't think they've got that type of material in stock. But Ooh. Or you can <laughs> go into one of our previous logos. Um, all over at... Uh, at zazzle.com slash comes out loud or zazzle insert country code here slash comes out loud uh you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud we thank patrons for all of their support uh you can also send us a little bit of cash at paypal.me slash comes out loud uh you can find us on basically any uh podcast catcher uh if we're not on there let me know i'll make sure we get on there but uh, but you know it's uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, uh, Spotify. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box set, box puppy, box cup, box something or other, or Windgem W Y N D G E M over on Twitch, where I have bears and dragons, where I killed the party recently, and now they're another. They're playing other characters in order to save their souls. Oh. If you wish, yeah. If you Sorry. wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub Seven Nine. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup Underscore Umbra on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Yeah. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online is Gamera73 on Twitter. Uh, it is definitely not safe for work because that handle is G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3-X-X-X. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.